It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. And welcome back to another Can Crusher Spotlight. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. Guys, thank you for returning to Can Crusher Spotlight. I truly mean it. I love each and every one of you coming back week in and week out to listen to a spotlight about a wrestler out in the world of professional wrestling. Well, this week we have two. We have two professional wrestlers joining us on one spotlight. It is returning Calvin Couture and Tyler Klein, better known as The Runway. Yes, The Runway is coming on Can Crusher Spotlight, and I'm super excited to talk to these guys. I just hope they can help fix me. Uh, You guys all know my fashion sense. I like cargo shorts and hoodies and cut-off shirts when I'm at work, still with cargo shorts. Because that's what I wear. These guys are the best dressed guys in professional wrestling. They are the most fashionable tag team ever. And they are also your two PW tag team champions. The runway will be joining us here real quick. But you know what else is cool to wear? Collar and elbow. Yeah, we have a promo code for you as well. It's Can Crushers. All one word. Capital C and Can. Capital C and Crushers. Al Snow is coming up next to tell you all about it. But first, we have to tell you about one more thing. Guys, give us a five-star review. Head over to Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars. Leave us a cool review. Be like Daniel Spencer that was really so cool and said, this is a trashy podcast. It is a trashy podcast. We talk about garbage every once in a while. But today, we're not talking about garbage. We're talking about The Runway. The Runway, the most fashionable team in professional wrestling. Al Snow and then Calvin and Tyler join me on the line. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Welcome back to Can Crushers, guys. I told you I love these guys. Uh, My favorite tag team right now. No matter what I say, though, I am sure I have a little bit of heat with one of the two. And it's not Tyler, because Tyler loves me. Guys, on the show right now is the most fashionable tag team ever. Your two PW tag team champions. The fashionista himself, Calvin Couture, and the trophy boy, Tyler Klein. Gentlemen, how are you? Huh. Um, fine, I guess, but we have a lot of stuff to discuss with you oh, no. and also Megan a little bit. Oh, we're jumping right into this right now. Oh, we're jumping. We're jumping oh, right we're into jumping. This. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know how I feel, Calvin. How, how, how do you feel? Well, it's interesting because, you know, Megan wants to be a runway girl. She wants to be a runway model. And then she doesn't even like talking about the runway. That's great. That's, she, that's great. That's really great. Yeah, she Thanks, just Megan. legit talks about and gushes over uh, that George wearing pool. Ew. Yeah. Well, we're going to have some, we have, we have some, obviously it's why Megan didn't show up today for this. So clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Well, if we're going to my girls, you know, disappointed. Mm-hmm. See, and I, I knew right off the bat because when I called you, um, Tyler is always upbeat and bubbly. And I, I, it depends on sometimes how I get Calvin, but he definitely sounded salty. And I was like, oh, no, what, what is what's Calvin bringing to me today? Um, and it's a lot of sass. 
I'm not salty. I just don't forget. I, I, I know. And I thought I thought we put that um, water under the bridge. We hugged it out at one point. Like I said, people don't forget. Oh, all right. So what these guys brought up right off the bat is the last IWC event. The runway made their debut against the main event. And you guys heard me at least saying I, I wanted to talk about it. And, and all Megan wanted to do was talk about, you know, Duke and Gannon and randoms sitting along ringside. What? Let's what just... of, and, and she she wanted to you know not talk about the models that we had the looks that we had and ca- instead she talks about the most unfashionable person in the entire building, Bradley. Yet, she heel Bradley. Be, yet she wants to be run of one of our runway models. Like Megan, I don't understand. You're telling me one thing. You're telling people another thing. What what what's it going to be, girl? Like, come on, you gotta. What what are you doing here? I mean, if if that's the t- if that's the type of company she keeps, you know that kind of type of unfashionable company. Do we do we even want her as one of the runway girls? You know, I I don't know. Wow, she has links with others too. So, um, she's she's a big fan of Jock Sampson. I know you guys have had some run-ins, mm-hmm. and yeah, um, respectable, respectable, respectable. right? Um, the Gambinos. Once again, say? mad respect, mad respect to the Gambinos. Okay. Hardcore Hammer Time. Mm. Yeah, no. Yeah, mm. I knew that. I knew that's what the line. You know, one and two always good. Mm, yeah. No, they need to go. So, are we saying we're going to see an attack? Since we're booking more tag team matches on IWC, are we going to see an attack? I mean, clearly, you're I not going to say yes, worth Mark. Our time. Oh no! Well, the time? No, because let's be honest here. If we're talking about hardcore hammer time, um, <laughs> how, how's, about he, how's how's who been thankful this month? I mean, he walks and it breaks. So let's be real. He can't get out there. He's brittle. He's brittle. He's about to fall apart. So realistically, we know who the star of that team is. And I've had my run-ins with Jamie Jameson, and you know what? I came up with him. So. Bring it on, Jamie. That's all I'm saying. You will not expect me coming at you because, yeah, you might be bigger than me, but guess what? I'm a fight. I'm here to fight. And I think I proved, I think actually we proved that no matter what, we are here to fight. So regardless of your size, who you are, how you wrestled, where you wrestled, who you wrestled, it doesn't matter. We're here to fight. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Wow. At least I'm not taking it. It's all on uh, Megan right now, so I'm happy about that. Good. Well, I mean, you didn't change the subject. I you tried. Go on and on and on and on and on about it. I mean, I, I didn't hear the change. I didn't hear a Hey, Megan, let's get back on task. Let's not talk she's about. She's just, she's just upset that that she wasn't one of our runway models. I get it. Well, that's the track record. Like you know? Well. Oh. Right. Not saying yes, not saying no, but it's not looking good. It's not looking good. All right. Let's talk about your new runway models that that showed up at IWC. I mean, how far across the earth did you have to go to find these beautiful women? Or were they just knocking at your door, pandering, saying, we want to be in the runway, like Megan Nelson? Wow. Well. Not I mean, anyone. Come to us. <laughs> yeah, not anyone can just be uh, one of the runways models. They are hand selected. It's an arduous task. I mean, we we only had two. We could have fielded more, but we're that selective that it could have only been those two. So it's a we tight had, niche society. We we had yeah exactly. We had guys, girls. It didn't matter, but we decided that she picked the two best of the bunch, and those two were the clear winners. And we had a we had a significant look that we wanted to achieve, and a message that we wanted to send. And I think we sent it very well by the models that we chose and what they were wearing. So, for sure, I, I, I agree. mission accomplished. 
So let's talk about the match that you guys debuted in, and then we'll get to 2PW because there's so much in 2PW we want to talk about as well. Um, essentially, the main event defeated you guys with a illegal maneuver as well. Too many people entering at one time, and it, mm-hmm. it just wasn't right. So do we see you coming back after the main event or just like, pff, all right, whatever. These, these guys had to cheat to beat us. And now all of a sudden you're going to head towards, you know, money shot or whomever else in IWC. Well, I think we made a statement that, you know, we are in IWC. You will, you will know who we are and that we are a threat, even though we lost. So, any of these other teams can say whatever they want, like that we lost and, you know, we might not deserve a shot at the titles or we might not deserve a shot at them, but they're, uh, sounds like excuses to me. I I mean, let's face it. We did go up against the most successful tag team in IWC to debut against nothing against the main event. They're awesome guys, but they're like us. They're everywhere. They've got the experience about that, so why not go and make a debut against the biggest tag team? Yeah, that, that's that's perfect. And it was so close to you guys getting the win, but, you know, just a little bit so far away as well. Um, Let's talk about how you guys actually met, and then we'll switch over to 2BW, because we, we pandered on it on both um, spotlights for both of you guys, but we really never found out how the runway, you know, the fashionista and the trophy boy, just made this connection and made one of the hottest tag teams out there right now. Well, I mean, through everything, obviously the miracle of social media is how eventually Calvin and I got to get to know each other. It was in Massachusetts, he was in Pittsburgh. I mean, I found somebody who was, you know, essentially had the same, had a very similar, I had a very similar aesthetic to something they were already building. Um, a lot of respect for the amount of work that Calvin put into his put into his characters, put into how he looked, everything else like that, really getting that great era of wrestling that I enjoy, where it's more about who you are, what you're wearing, the showmanship, that as opposed to how many different flips you can do before you hit a move. Like that's that's essentially what drew me to Calvin and, and really just wanting to get out of Massachusetts and make a change and you know start the tag team here. I mean, we didn't start off as a tag team right away. It was my move. It took a little time, and and we were a tag team that actually started and came up during a global pandemic and worked on that while others were sitting at home. Yeah, eating donuts or something. Too, and and something that uh, that you kind of mentioned. Um, I think the the main thing that kind of really drew everything and I, I know Tyler um, spoke upon it a little bit is we had the same vision uh, we had a lot of the same um, ideas whenever it came to what we wanted to put out there so it really just made sense to do it as more of a team um, and see how we can work off of each other and um, the chemistry of just having that natural uh, idea and vision. And I think it's really, really um, paid off. Because uh, I can say I've been in countless teams um, since I've started. And um, it's hard to force that team feel. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's something that's forced, which I think makes for some of the most successful tag teams. And um yeah, it's just having the same vision and the same ideas and and working off of that uh, to do what's best for the team and not just individually. Because, um, you know, we are, of course, individual wrestlers, individual characters, but it gets enhanced when we're together as a team. So um, and I think that's huge because I think a lot of tag teams anymore are just individuals that get randomly put together and have to kind of find that along the way. Um, so it's, it's interesting whenever you get to kind of 
mold your own and mesh your own and, and make things work. So that's definitely something that I think sets us apart um, from a lot of others is it just doesn't feel like a random team put together. And you're right. It feels like, and I'll show my age, and you guys know it already, that you guys are a Midnight Express, a Rock and Roll Express, a Heart Foundation, even a, like a Killer Bees, because it's there. You 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 mm-hmm. know you guys go mm-hmm. together, and it's not, uh, no disrespect, John Moxley and Eddie Kingston, that, you know, two great singles wrestlers, but it just doesn't work because right. it, it doesn't work. So you guys did it the old school way, and I bring up a lot of those names because they're my favorites. Who are some of yours, and you guys have a different um, style from the rock and roll or midnight or this, that, or the other, but who are some of the ones that when you guys are watching tape studies that you're like, this is who we need to watch because they are the, the foundation, essentially, of tag team wrestling. Because I don't see you guys, no disrespect, is the Steiners or Doom or the Road Warriors or anything. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of um, who I've been watching and who I've been getting inspiration from lately, um, three teams come right to mind. Um, The Quebecers. Oh, my God. uh, Because they they had a really good dynamic. Um, The Beverly Brothers, uh, which I know they weren't very very popular but they really had that aura about them and then um this is kind of a random one put together but it it was one that i was always drawn to as a um, you know as i was watching wrestling when i was younger money incorporated um because i think with money incorporated they weren't necessarily a team as come up as a unit but they were two characters and two wrestlers that just worked together based on their character so it made sense and even though they weren't a regular team, um, they really became that unit coming together. And, and they kind of had the same ideas and, and, the, and the same um, the same concept of, of what they wanted to be as a team. So those would probably be three of my teams that I would say that I've been watching lately just to um, study and get inspiration from. And Money, Inc., actually one of the most successful teams out there uh, a couple title runs um, mm-hmm. i'm sure you guys listening to the podcast um i'm not sure if the runway has heard this but uh the english professor and i drank with the beverly brothers one time in new york city which was no way cool. unbelievable within itself um in the cool, quebecer cool. shocked me it, that one shocks me but i do see it now i do tyler i'm mm-hmm. sorry Oh no, you're fine. I mean, we Calvin's are Calvin has you know all those teams, and the, those are you know great things that we kind of look at. I mean, I've also got a couple that I like. And I kind of thought of whenever I'm looking at tape study, and and mine are more a little bit more recent. Um, they may not either be everybody's favorite tag team, but they're or tag teams, but they're also ones that have a a little bit of a different dynamic so like my first one was always um la resistance uh when they first came out just because it's very uh, to me it was really great character work there's a lot of tag teams they were coherent tag team um and that they were one of my favorite tag teams just because i always am drawn to a very strong heel tag team um and then my other one is of course the fashion police or brizango whichever one you want to go with uh but they were very, I mean, they are a very similar gimmick, and and it's a shame that they're not on TV anymore. But it, they were one of my more favorite tag teams, and they're ones that could go. They're a little bit like us. They, they're a little bit of a tweener. They can either be booed the bad guys, or they can be faces and cheered. It, it's a little bit of both. So, like, I really enjoy watching their stuff and seeing, you know, because they are smaller, it's kind of like we are. You know, what we could possibly incorporate with that as far as move sets and, and just character and, and looks and everything else like that. And just really exuding, you know, what we have, which is the, the, the fashion sort of angle. You brought up the, the fashion police. We'll just leave them with that because I really de- didn't like the Brizango name. I like the fashion police a hell of a lot better. Um, mm-hmm. Most recently released from the WWE. Um, do you guys think, they they can pop up. 
They, they can really pop up. They, I think they would slide in good in, in Impact or, you know, someplace like that. I really, I think they could go into Impact or, or, or a, a place like that. I really do. Um, both very, very, you know, talented. Both of them were getting, did essentially get a, a little, try to get a little bit of a push, and they were getting a tag team push. Um, I just think that with the current state of things in WWE, it's just that, it, you know, they are very popular outside of the wrestling ring, or at, at least, um, uh, you know, with social media and stuff like that. And I think that was probably, that could have been one of the driving factors, because Tyler Breeze is really huge on social media, with everything that he's done, with all of his gaming stuff, and I think that kind of, you know, ran the course of why I pop Christmas. That's probably one of the reasons why they were like that was because he was, you know, he could make money off of doing that because how popular the shows were. Now it's probably more popular now that he's outside the WWE and, and more free to create. So, but. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, um, but I think with with both of them, I mean, I think you can see them show up wherever. I think it's just going to mm-hmm. be interesting to see if they show up somewhere as a team or if they show up somewhere, um, you know, one-on-one because they're another duo that didn't really start as a duo, but it kind of makes sense for them to, to find each other and kind of be that team. Um, now I don't know if that was more out of convenience for that time because they were trying to reinvent themselves or what exactly it was, but I think it's going to be interesting to see, if they do pop up where it's going to be, I could definitely see impact being the place where mm-hmm. they would go and have the most success. Um, I've always liked what impact does. I think that impacts a different, a different type of animal um, because they, they don't try to be somebody that they're not. And it really gives people performers a place to really develop um, and kind of reinvent themselves. And I think that that's really necessary in wrestling, uh, especially in this day and age, because you can't always be doing the same thing that you've been doing. And you have to think mm-hmm. of different ways to reinvent yourself and to change it up, even if it's um, really small. Um, so I definitely think that, you know, it, that's a way to that they can find themselves. And I think that you know they'll they'll find where they're going to be and where they're going to end up next. And I'm really excited to see what that's going to be, uh, especially for both of them because they're real they're super talented and um, it's interesting. I think it's an interesting state in the wrestling world that we're in right now. Calvin, that's a great point. Now I actually want to bring that up, and this wasn't this wasn't even on my list to talk about, but. There is so much wrestling out there, and let's just say the the four bigs, uh, WWE, AEW, Impact, and NWA sold out today really quick. You guys know we record this a week early, da 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 so it's now a week late. But um, all four of them are completely different anymore. You know, WWE is still <laughs> all entertainment, no matter what you say. Yes, wrestling is sprinkled in. AEW, it's to me, it's still that... Indie field, you know, going big. It's like the new generation of wrestling. Impact, exactly. I agree. It's you know they're they're tagged with a lot of um, developmental places like OVW or Monster or stuff like that. And then NWA is just old school. This is what we're doing. We're doing old school. So you have hours and hours and hours of wrestling out there. If you only want old school, go to old NWA. Are you guys? legit watching everything like we try to do because it's all right let's let's face it it's it's a work week of watching wrestling anymore yeah no no actually and it, it's kind of crazy because i'm very guilty of just not really watching a lot of the current stuff and it's not that mm-hmm. i don't want to watch the current stuff it's just like you said there's so much current stuff that i feel like i don't always have time to watch the current stuff and um I, I, I'm bad with even, like, I, I love it. I love what NWA is doing, but I can't even follow up with them as much anymore. Um, I think the last current thing I watched actually was the, the Battle Riot from MLW. I think that was actually the mm-hmm. last thing that I, that I watched that was current. Because um, for me, I enjoy watching wrestling 
that I grew up with. I enjoy watching wrestling that I feel like I get the most from. I like watching wrestling that no one's watching right now to get inspiration for other things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm of course I'm always watching the the WWE events um, on Peacock when it's working. Yeah. Um, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> um, and then I try to catch on a catch up on AEW as much as I can, but. It's really hard. It, you, like you're right. It, it, it's like a it's work watching so much wrestling and trying to keep up on what's going on that it, it, sometimes sometimes you're almost better off watching recaps just because mm-hmm. it saves time. Lots um, of time. But yeah, it, it, it's hard, and you have to you really have to make a choose on what you want to watch and, and what you want to um, enjoy because I think. Sometimes if you force yourself to watch so much, you'd stop enjoying it. And that's wrestling supposed to be fun. It's not, it's not supposed to be a hassle or a chore. And I think it get, it turns into being a chore and that's whenever it's just not as fun. So, um, watch what, what, what you're into, watch what you want to watch. And, and I think a lot of people are afraid that they, they, they want to, that they're going to miss something or that they, they don't want to turn it off because you never know what's going to happen. But, Go find out. <laughs> You'll yeah, find yeah. out. <laughs> kind of. In the, in the age of social media that we're in, you definitely find out if something happened and it's definitely going to be a clip of it. So In mm-hmm. seconds. In seconds, anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So you guys are going all over the place. We're still lingering about not talking about 2PW yet, but we'll get there. You guys are all over the place now. Um, that's awesome. That it really is. Mm-hmm. But is there some place that you know you have a pin mark saying, "This is where we want to go before we, you know, head off into Impact or you know AEW or or you know any of the bigs." Is there some little, and I'm not saying little, but some indie place that you're like, "This is it. This is where we have to get to because shit's real there." Honestly, it's kind of funny that you say that. I was actually thinking about that today and kind of thinking of, like, yeah, where, I want, about where, where I want to be um, and, and where I would like to make a mark at least once. Um, the one that comes to mind is uh, I would love to go make a mark um, at Beyond. Mm-hmm. That's a place that I definitely want to go and try to make a mark. Um, and... We were even talking earlier about, uh, ironically enough, trying to get up into the um, Massachusetts, New England area again to make our mark. Uh, since we've made it in Pittsburgh, we might as well go back and make it up there. So we were definitely talking about um, limitless, limitless. chaotic yeah. being being a goal um, as well. Um, right now, I would like to see at least a match or two in, in MLW for us. I mean, and that's a little bigger, um, mm-hmm. but that's definitely a place where I'd like to um, utilize the skill set that we have and bring us something a little different to the table. But um, independently, I mean, Fest, really, we there's a lot of that the other day. Yeah. And there's a lot of places that I would love, love, love to get to and to go. Um, any opportunity that comes up, um, mm-hmm. and I always try to take the most advantage of. Um, so it's really one of those. Those are definitely the places that come first to mind whenever we think that. I don't know, Tyler, am I missing any that you were thinking mm-hmm. of? I mean, not not really. Like, we want to do get a maybe get a little bit more into the Massachusetts area, like Kevin said, um, since I'm I'm originally from there and you know, there are places that I can reach that, you know, I have a little bit more connection with. Like Calvin's got his connections here that he's built over time. There are people up in Massachusetts who I've known for a while that need to would want to get back in touch with. Like I love what Limitless is doing. Um they really got a lot going for them as well as uh, beyond and beyond is bringing in people from all over. Cause you've got people from the Pittsburgh area. You've got people from different places, different cities. So they're really reaching out and it's really awesome to see that um, because it's just bringing a whole lot more uh, wrestlers to the forefront of all of this. And it's really great. Yeah. I- Massachusetts definitely. Yes. Um, as far as like a bigger thing, I'm going to be, <laughs> 
I mean, uh, uh, AEW or, or Dark, is, like as a one-off, would be great, you know, to see. But you know, we all know how those kind of matches end. So I personally would say like um, uh, Impact or like Calvin said, MLW, something that's you know definitely very possible, especially with MLW being. Um, it, you know, really doing more with like the the bigger rumbles and stuff like that. We know people who've been on it. And see who we can make connections with, really. Okay, so you guys have went north. So I mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I, I want to know. Um, we we have connections. Uh, OVW and, and Al Snow. Would you like mm-hmm. to go see the historic Davis Arena, or of, maybe trek down course. to like anything like that down in Florida or anything? Of course, well, yeah. Um, definitely I mean, Florida. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> duh. Yeah, and and um, I mean, you know, when we're talking about Florida, best is on our radar. I mean, they're some, they're doing some great things. I mean, Daddy himself, Effie's their champion, so mm-hmm. it's always a fun time whenever Effie's involved. Um, and yeah, OVW, it's definitely it could be something that's on the radar if if things line up and everything aligns, then. You know that would definitely be a place that we could we could pop up in next. So it really just depends. Oh. We're not we're not somebody like we're not a team that will miss out on an opportunity. We're we would, we're going to take all of the opportunity that we can to mm-hmm. to continue to get ourselves out there. Yeah, and, and another place that you guys are, which I think is one of the greatest promotions going. Um, right now, you guys know I will wave the Camp Leapfrog flag. Uh, I love everything about it because, yes, there's wrestling involved, but it is, it's a, it's a sitcom, it's a rom-com, there's horror, it, it is a true life reality show, uh, <laughs> slash movie it's presentation opera. yeah mm-hmm. uh, it, opera. it really is and i hate using saying the thing that like oh wrestling is soap opera for men well whatever yeah you know whatever it's men whatever but <sighs> this is actually a soap opera this is mm. yeah i love and, it and that's what's and that's what's so fun about it is yeah. um you know they do different events and and it was something that was just supposed to be a one-time thing, and um, you know, it really caught on. and And I think it gave not only um, the wrestlers, but the fans, something to look forward to while we were working through the pandemic. And I think that's something that's really huge. Is it, it brings a group of people together that really want to make wrestling better and have fun with it because i think people forget to have fun with with wrestling you know it's serious and it's real but at the same time you got to have fun with it because um at the end of the day why are you doing it right mm-hmm. my favorite episode or saga or whatever is still um when you and well both of you and, and effie were the hosts the, mm-hmm. that was a valentine's one right i mean i i've right. watched yeah. them all frog. yeah Unbelievable. That is also one of my favorites. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> also one of well, my favorites. Well, I mean, favorites. heavily featured. Of course, we're gonna, it's going to be our favorite. It's one of the... I mean, I've seen... And it's it's not just us. There, and it's, it's not. You know, uh, plenty of people who really do put it up that Love Frog was their all-time favorite episode of Camp Leap Frog. Just because of the story, because of the people who are on it, you know what it brought to it, and how the matches... And how good the how good the matches are. I mean, all the matches in Camp Leaf Frog are always so well put out and everything, well thought out and everything. But Love Frog was just something completely different. It was a huge encapsulated story that went from beginning to end and just kind of just told it all in a single setting, which is really great. And this, you know, that's the big thing that Leaf Frog likes to do. Yeah, they do. All right, we're still uh, pandering on 2PW because that's the way that we keep everybody around because you guys have a huge match coming up, but we're not there yet. Uh, Let's get a little personal with you guys as we dive into um, just separate random things. Okay. And and I know this, this is one coming right off the bat because I've been asking everybody this and I want you guys to take because I didn't get to ask you guys during your your spotlights your solo spotlights 
Um, mm-hmm. There's there's a huge, there's many different uh, stigmatisms in wrestling, and together or separately, um, if, if you guys could just, uh, I mean, let's eliminate all of them, but what is the number one one that you guys want to say it doesn't belong because... It ruins wrestling and, you know, maybe the fans' interaction or something. Ooh, that's a good question. I, I've gotten better since your spotlight, Calvin. I really have. I can, Yeah, I can say that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this is a good one. Um, yeah. Well, great. I get to do a lot of editing now because we get to a lot of humps and ahs. Stigmatism. Though. Yeah, I mean, for me, hmm, I, I, I would think for me, like, one of the things that I think needs to go away from wrestling. I mean, just to kind of throw something out there different because there's a lot of stuff that doesn't actually, you know, belong in it. Um, is like, uh, how do I word this? I can um, go if you have, if you want to. Yeah, you go, you go. <laughs> I got to think a little bit. I got to think a little bit more because like, with how I think about it, it might be like, it, I, I just have to consider my words carefully when I say it. I don't need to so, get my thing is the idea that a wrestler has to look a certain way um, or the idea that a wrestler has to be a certain height, a certain build. Um, and I don't want to say the whole thing that wrestling is for everyone because I, I, that's not really what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's a way that you can go about respecting what others have done before you and then just being a dick about it. And I think that there are a lot of people <laughs> out there now that are just being a dick about it. Cause if you don't look a certain way, they don't respect you. Or if you don't do a certain thing, they don't respect you. Or if you don't, you know, do something specifically, they don't respect you. And I think that's not fair for people that really do try hard. You know, everyone, I don't want to say I don't want to say excuses for everybody, but everyone has their own issues and things that they're dealing with themselves. And you don't know how hard somebody's working. You don't know how how much someone's hustling in other ways to get themselves to where they have to be. And I think it's really unfair for for um, people to judge you because of that. Um, you know, I I know for for me uh, personally. Um, I've had to work extra hard because I'm not 6'2". I'm not 225. You know, I'm not the most the most buff guy ever. And I know that. And I, I work to get to where I have to be. Um, but that doesn't mean that I can't give you just as good of a show as someone else. That doesn't mean that I don't care as much. And that doesn't mean that I'm not going to go out there and give my all to give the fans the best show that I possibly can to prove myself. Um, so that would be my thing is, is I think that whenever people say, oh, well, you don't look like a wrestler. And I'm like, well, what does a wrestler look like to you? Because it's not all about guys looking like Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior anymore. No disrespect to guys that do look like that. But I think, you know, it's just like, Actors don't look a certain way. Right. You know, actresses don't look a certain way. So it, it's kind of, I think that's kind of a, something that it, it seems like people are getting away from, which is good. Um, but I think it's still there. And that's something that kind of bothers me a little bit. Okay. I, I support that wholeheartedly. Yes. Because it was WWF. It was the, the monster attitude era that, you know, everybody had to be like you said. Six two was a small guy at two forty. If you weren't seven foot, you weren't getting a title. So yeah, right. Tyler. Um, did you choose your words I first of all? I, I mean, yeah, I, I I have to go the same route as as Calvin on this one. Um, but I'm gonna say more along the lines of just people, just just the just spitefulness in wrestling and like that's i've been one of the major uh complaints that i've had it's like a lot of people they see somebody being successful or they see somebody being not a lot of people but some people they see people see uh, like you know the peers going out and going places and really you know doing a lot but instead of being oh that's cool or oh that's great 
you know, being spiteful about it, you know, talking about the places they work or where they've gone. And because those places seem to be different and maybe even be more popular, you know, they decide to put the, put those people down as opposed to, you know, being, oh, that's pretty awesome. Congratulations. Like taking it as a negative and then just kind of being spiteful with it. Like it, it, that needs to definitely, you know, get out of wrestling. I mean, jealousy, like Calvin says, jealousy is a disease, obviously. I hate to use this thing, but, you know, that's essentially what it is. And, you know, being happy for one another and your friends who are going off and doing things, like, I think that's more of a way of building and, and you know, a less toxic, you know, way of thinking about wrestling. I mean, that that's just really my two cents on it, just because it's something that I've noticed and it's something that has really sort of bothered me a little bit um, lately, which is, you know, one of those, it's just one of those things, but like, eh, it, that's why it was kind of hard to choose my words carefully because I wanted to, I wanted to like, you know, put it out there and, and, and everything, but it's like, I didn't want to just be a jerk about, be a huge jerk about it. But, you know, like Calvin said, and I completely agree, it's like wrestling, you know, you don't have to look a certain way anymore. You know, there's plenty of people that are going to remember you know, a person for their, a wrestler for their personality or what they wore or, or, you know, their interactions. And the only thing that matters at the end of the day, what people don't forget or that people do forget is that it's not about you. It's about the people buying the ticket. And if those people aren't coming back, then, you know, that, that, that presents a problem. I mean, that's kind of essentially my, you know, my two cents about it. (laughs) No, but that makes perfect sense because you see that you you see it all over mm-hmm. all over the place. Um, if you're successful, somebody's gonna hate you because you're doing something that maybe. Oh man, I, I've been in the and we'll keep it in wrestling. I've been in business for you know for 15 years, and I never made the, a trip to Florida, or I never made mm-hmm. it to so on and so forth, and yeah. It, do you guys feel now I'm gonna jump off on it? Do you still feel that, you know, because you hear stories about when you know the Wild Samoans were in the Rock and Roll Express were in, do you feel it's so cutthroat anymore? Or is it a work in progress that everybody is kind of on the same page anymore? That's a good question. Um yeah, good question. Wrestling's always gonna be cutthroat. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just that type of of uh environment. Um, wrestling doesn't do any favors for anybody and um, wrestling doesn't owe anyone anything and at the same time I think people forget that you don't owe wrestling anything either um, I think what's great is that now um, you know we're in a different era where people are celebrated for for being different and you know, there's more opportunities to stand out. Um, like, I think the independents right now are, are the best that they've ever been. And I think that's a great thing because you're getting to see a lot of varieties. Um, you're not you're not just seeing the same people, the same type of wrestling. Um, you're not seeing aversions of other people either. You're seeing people be uniquely them and get noticed for being uniquely who they are. Um <clears throat> I think it's great because you don't want to be, you don't always want to be compared to, to other people. Um, you want to, you obviously want to be the first you, which I think is, is huge. And I think there's a lot of people right now that are the first them that have either yet to be discovered or are on the rise. And I think that that's something that's, that's great, but wrestling will always be cutthroat. Do you, do yeah, you feel anything? Yeah, that was a simple answer. Thanks. Do you, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just agreeing with him. Like, it, it, he's completely right with what he said. Do you guys get any of that, though? I mean, on, on a personal level, you know, between Mark Calvin and Tyler, do you do you feel, and I'm not, I'm not throwing a name out because you, we all know how that goes over here on Can Crushers. Yeah. I get shit on. But do you feel that Team ABC is just cutting you down because... You are over places. Um, it depends. It depends. On I wouldn't where you say. Are. T- I wouldn't say team. I wouldn't say like there's a team. It, it has to. It would have to do with individ- individuals, just because you can't loop everybody with a team. But like it, 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 
Yeah, I think it depends on where you are, really. There are, I think there are always going to be people that don't want to see you succeed for whatever reason, um, you know, whatever. But um, honestly, for someone that, that does that personally, I just it just makes me want to work harder. And whenever I get opportunities mm -hmm. and, you know, whenever we do get out there more and get more places, it's, um, you know, it, 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 it's at the end of the day, it's not it's not their experience in the business and it's not what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone wants to waste time by cutting us down or cutting others down, um, that's a pretty sad way to be in the business and a pretty sad way to, um, you know, focus more so on others and you're focusing on yourself. Uh, it's sad. It's it, it's a sad thing because it's um, you know, at the end of the day, you got to worry about your damn self. And mm -hmm. if you're worrying more about what others are doing and where others are going, and and um, really, the outcome of what someone else is doing, then what you're you're doing. I mean, all you're going to be is a is a bitter is a bitter person. And I don't have time for people to be bitter. Um, I don't have time to be bitter. Uh, the only thing I'm doing is I don't have time to be bitter. I'm trying to get better. So whenever they're being bitter, I'm going to get better. And um, you, know, you just got to block people out. Sometimes. You just got to block out the hate, what people think of you. And um, you just got to do you because people are too worried about pleasing certain people instead of doing their own thing. And I think that's what holds people back. And I'm not trying to be held back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just to recap that then, essentially, you being bitter, you know, not saying you, Calvin, you can't put your you can't put your best foot forward then either because that bitterness rubs off. Um, not only in wrestling, but that is a great life um, advice part of Can Crushers this week. Exactly. Exactly. Tyler, I'm glad you're on the show because you're letting Calvin do, you know, he's kind of taking over the leadership of the runway right now. And he's, yes. He always does. He, he always like does. Little, yes. Okay. He's That's something talker. I'm trying to work on. I just, I get, I get, I get started and I get going and I just don't stop. Right. I just can't just shut him up. And that's okay. That's okay. All right. Uh, August 28th, we have a tag team championship match coming up at 2PW. You guys are the mm -hmm. reigning, defending, undefeated tag team champions of 2PW. And we're going right into a freaking fashionista, fashionista street fight match against the STDs or sexually talented dudes, whatever you want to call them nowadays. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how P PC we're going to be, but they're always going to be the STDs to me. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Holy hell. Uh, Calvin, I've seen you in a, a couple of street fights here and there. Um, what do we expect on August 28th at 2PW? Because oh. <laughs> I'm really excited. You, you're going to see a lot. I mean, this is Calvin's creation. So... You're going to see a lot of things that you are not going to normally see in a regular street fight. But you're going to have to actually go to the show to see everything. I'm pretty sure we're going to you know, definitely bring it. We're bringing you know, Calvin's own take on a street fight. Oh, yeah. We're, there's going to be surprises leading up. all of it. We're, I, I have some surprises I probably don't even know about yet. <laughs> that you don't know about yet? Yeah, I don't know. You never know. You never know what I'm going to find or bring. Right, we're roughly two weeks away from it, so yeah, anything can happen. We have so much time, so we much. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of time, and and like we have anything to be worried about anyway. So right. there is that. I mean, they get their they get their rematch. It's a rule, but it's not like we're worried about it. What we have to beat them one on one now instead of being them with uh, who were the other two? I can't even remember. Okay, I still. I still have I still have a little little bit of business to take care of with them. We took their titles, and I'm ready to send them packing. <laughs> oh, oh, exactly. So, talking about tag teams, uh, 2PW has probably one of the greatest tag team divisions out there right now. Uh, you guys waving the flag at the top, being the champs that you are. Uh, you have the mm -hmm. STDs, but. A, a little word association or something about all of these guys I'm going to mention because I have four more teams that 
on even, any given Sunday at any organization are champs. You have the Sons of Liberty. You have the Jesus Club. You have Tito and Don. And then you have the Hossman that, holy crap, this is a stacked tag team division. You know, we see this hashtag now, more tag matches all over the place. Hashtag book more tag matches. Whatever yeah, the hell you. it is. I don't care. It's just we want more tag team matches. Come Excuse on. Me. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. We care. Yeah. I'm, it's, it's, yes, I know you care. I know you care, but I'm just saying, that, like, the hashtag is. I'm talking about the greatest tag team division right now. It's 2PW. And I'm giving you your right. dues, and I just. Go ahead. You say the hashtag one more time. This way, I get it hashtag, correct. Hashtag book more tag matches. Okay. Cowards. 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 So let's talk about this division a little bit. Uh, again, you're champs, so all these guys are climbing at your heels. Any of mm-hmm. them, though, that you're like, eh, maybe if we take a little snooze before the match, are you worried about? No. <laughs> not one bit. No, and and I'll tell you why I'm not worried about any of these teams. Um, while I respect a lot of these guys and what they do, they're not up and down the road every weekend wrestling. All right, they don't they don't go as many places as they can to hone their craft. That is why we are the tag team champions, and that's why we're going to continue being the tag team champions of Prospect Pro Wrestling. We have what it takes. We have the drive, and we have the experience that a lot of them lack. All right. Sorry, as we're doing this, I'm I'm fixing my hair in the mirror just to say, you know, what I'm doing. And that's why you're the trophy boy. Uh, yeah, I gotta look good even when I'm not on video. But back to the back to the prospect pro wrestling tag team division. Um, I'm not afraid of any of those teams. In fact, I want to wrestle all those teams. I want to wrestle every team that comes through that division. I want to prove why we're the top team in prospect pro wrestling and in the area. And you know what? In the country today, um, because at, at this point, we'll take anyone on. I'm, I'm not afraid of anybody. I, I want to wrestle everybody, anybody, and um, bring it on. I don't care if you're a member of the Hossman. I don't care if um, you know, you're bigger than us. It doesn't matter. Bring it on. We're going to defend our titles and we always have something up our sleeves. So, um, we'll see what happens at the Fashionista street fight, but I think the odds are in our favor on that one. I don't know. It's your it's, match. It's, it's, it's my match. It's, it's time to present a cure to TPW with the STDs and that's to, you know, end them for real this time. A little bit of cream. Let's clean them up. A little bit of cream. Clean them up. STDs. Yeah. That's all it's all about. Uh, You brought up that you'll take on anybody in the world, essentially. So we have you guys as dream matches. Again, I keep reverting back to the spotlights on -on one-on-one. But now that we have the runway on, their own spotlight, which, thank God, we we finally got this booked and get it set up. I want a couple tag teams, though, of who you guys would like to face. Um out there right now you know you got you guys want the usos the bloodline do you do you want you know anybody from mmw do you want to put ethan page and josh alexander back together as the north uh something like that um the first team that comes to mind we actually already spoke about i think uh runway versus fashion police needs to happen right mm-hmm. i think that's a pretty obvious that's one. Yes. I, think, yeah. I think that i think there's plenty of people that want that to happen I, i've, I've you never wanna... been I've never been big on like whenever somebody gets released and you know putting it out to the world that it's like oh hey I really want to wrestle these you know be a great match because I just to me it's not really my thing I mean they're getting released you know stuff's happening for them putting those out there right now but once everything gets completely settled you know that would be something like in the back of my mind that I would love to see I, i'd love to experience it I'd, I'd love to have it i mean that would be one of my dream matches without saying it all over social media but that is one of the matches that i would love to have um as far as another one honestly 
Oh gosh. Let's see. I'm gonna go out and I'm just gonna go ahead and say, um, just because I like them both, Effie and Alley Cash catch. Ooh, bussy. Uh, Team Bussy would probably be would definitely be a great match. I mean that the amount of character in that ring alone, the amount of you know uh, the, the 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 style of match, the type of match, the just overall enjoyment that I would get out of that match would be great. Personally, I mean those are those are my two choices right now because I absolutely think that they just have the best cohesion as far as like a tag teams go. Well, at, uh, that, that's me. You only really brought one to the table, Tyler, as Calvin brought up the the fashion police one because we've talked about it twenty five minutes ago. But you that's all right. Okay, you know what? <laughs> what? Shut up. Okay, uh, he has a point. I'm sorry, he has a point. <laughs> Okay, you got it from me. <laughs> I will sit here and yell from <laughs> from your den. You'll re- yell yeah. from your den. I'm not in a den. I'm in my bathroom fixing my hair. Oh, okay. Thank you, Calvin. Do you no have thanks, another Calvin. one? Oh, or do you um, want to steal? Or do you want to steal his and say, "Oh, uh, yeah, I just thought of this one. one. It would be it's Effie and Alicatch." Uh, no, I'm good. I'll think of another one. No, I mean, um. Just trying to think of like current teams or teams that would come back together. It's uh, it's interesting. I'm I'm just, I'm just trying to think of um, a team that would really bring out the best in the runway. Um, oh, and it, you know that's hard because I mean we put our effort into everything that we do. It is hard because, like, you think about it, even on the independents, like, there's not a ton of traveling tag teams that are essentially, you know, just a coherent tag team. There are a lot of places you go, there are tag teams that are just kind of stuck together. We've wrestled a lot of the ones that are coherent tag teams, like the main event. So, you know, coming off of a list. <laughs> I have one. Off of a list. You got one? When you're done, too, then I have one as well. And I've thought of this one like way before, runway. so go ahead. I would like the runway to wrestle the Sea Stars. Ooh, yes. On the same line. Actually. On the same line as mine. That's who I would like to see us wrestle. I thought, You know who I just thought of, honestly? Ahead. I just thought of one. Honestly, and this is some. This is a team that I would like to see. So I would hope you're being back honest. Together. Uh, shut up. Um, that actually would be... Ava and Davy Adam. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, and, uh, I remember them being when they were a tag team and they, they have it. And I would actually really like that to be a thing. Uh, again. Again. <laughs> because they're both so talented. Well, them teaming up again because they're both so talented. Mine. But that's just me. Mine would be, and they're both a little bit older in age. So my first one would be um, the West Hollywood Blondes. I- I'd like to see you guys. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Okay. I was literally telling somebody that the other day. Ironically enough, it's weird that you said that. Anyway, go on. And the other one would be the Beautiful People. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. That would be a lot of sass for one ring. It would that be. Would. It would be. And the match never ends, and you guys are just... No. Maybe you don't need Megan Nelson anymore because you have the beautiful people on your side all the time. <laughs> that Megan is Nelson. that that is a group to really... Woo! I don't, I, that's, that's too much for one ring, I think. I don't, know if I, I don't know if anywhere would be able to handle that. That's chills. That is chills. Yes. That's really what it is. It is. It is. All right, guys. Uh, what else do we have going on? Do we have um, some new runway merch coming? Do we have we we have a new Instagram that you know you guys are you're out there? Yes. yes. We decided Use. to make a runway Instagram and Twitter this time around, just so that we can kind of you know keep a little bit more, uh, make it easier easier for people to tag. But thank you. You know, just kind of put it out there and posting more. I mean, you can still tag us individually. I'm still expecting that. Thank oh, you. Of course. Um, 
Merch, right. of course. New t-shirts on the way. We're working on so a couple. Of we have a few designs. We have some good designs. Mark, I know you like the one. Oh, mm-hmm. so am I pulling? Am I pulling the old one from? And making the is there a new new one that should take over as a tattoo? Oh no, no 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 no. Oh no. okay. No, no this, this is, is just a new shirt <laughs> that I think you're gonna enjoy. Okay. Um, not only that new gear that I've been working on, so we're gonna get some new looks. When is all this gonna? A lot of. I, I want to. I want to know. Are we gonna see this on the twenty eighth? Anything new? Uh, to be determined, it might come out in our mm-hmm. fall line instead. We're we're yeah. still we're still working with our um, a few more designs, and we're making final selections shortly. So it might be out for the twenty eighth if we get an early release, but um, you might be seeing it in September. Uh, I have I have some plans for the twenty eighth anyway. Can, can, can I different. get on the early early release? We'll get you a pre order. Yes, we'll see. Wow, you're being nicer than me. Yeah, I know. We'll see. That never happens. What? When did we no. just have a heel face change on Mark all of a sudden? Because no, I still, I still, I, we hate still me. hate Mark. Let's be real. We do not. I. We we're do. talking. We're, we're we're talking about we're talking about profit. So I guess we can. Yeah. Use this, a lot. Oh. this is about making you look better. Exactly. It needs to make me look better. Now now that we're on the, this point, we really do need to make myself look better. I am I have something booked for the 14th to go with the Ebony Sensation to take care of my mental healthness. Um which I think that should be a whole mark day. Uh so what are you guys doing the 14th because I'm I'm just saying I think hanging out mm-hmm. with you Paris Sahara and myself, that would be the day that Mark needs. Can we out of town that day? Can we? Can we? To be determined. Can we at to least play that up a little bit and say, "Yes, that would have been great." But no, we're out of town. That I day. mean, it would have been for for you. I can say yes. Oh, that's that's. I believe that's a. Uh, it's a hard no, is what I'm getting. Well, I mean, unfortunately, we have we have an, we have a previous engagement on yeah. the fourteenth. I that I, date. Yeah, I know. I I know you do. Yeah. So I just seen it like an hour before recording <laughs> when I was stalking you to see yeah. if you guys put anything up on uh, the social medias. And why are you asking the questions, Mark? Yeah. The, wait. Ugh. Because it, it, this is people aren't going to go back a couple posts, so I might as well, you know, lead it forward. Back a couple posts. I mean, everybody looks at our posts all the time. That's I what I know. mean. That's Your what, not my posts. My posts go over like a lead balloon half the time, unless you guys are on it. Exactly. Lead balloon. Wow. That you never heard that one. That was like one of my grandfather's. Oh, so that then it should probably stay in the past. <sighs> yeah, wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. I think I just got older by hearing that. Oh, by that saying. Okay, yeah. (laughs) All right, this is your time. What else do you want out there? What what else are we going to chat about? Um, I've taken up enough uh, of your time. We got to 2PW. We got to Megan Nelson making an ass out of herself. Um, Mark's always there as well. New merch. Mm -hmm. I mean... You're getting all the heat for Megan. I mean, wasn't there other? Thi- I mean, I- I've seen the post. I've seen. I've seen the back. The backtracking. You know, maybe, maybe you know, it's time to kick Megan out. Just well, Megan's saying. never oh, in. Wow. She was. Oh. A, oh. Megan's never. A, she's not a can crusher, so to speak. She just. God, she was the only real. other person at the the event that. Wanted to she come. She was on the correspondent talk. for the event. She was a correspondent. Yes, okay. that was yeah. Will she come on again? Got no, it. because she's thrown me under the bus on things as well. So, Ooh, yeah. oh, there's heat. Drama. Tr- oh, drama's even better. Yes. No, Who I never like knew there would be heat on the on, on the other end of the. Mm. On the other end of the what? The other end of the um. Sorry, I'm looking for the other end of the uh, the rails there. The other end of the um, the other side. Uh, 
the other side. Why? Why am I? Why am I? I don't know. I can't. You don't, just yeah. Just don't say the other side of the it's lead balloon. The other end of the lead. no. <laughs> the other the other the other side of the coin ring. Whatever. Rail ring ring. Quit wire barricade, barricade barricade barricade. The the there you go. That's it. We got there eventually. Or there'd be heat on the other side of the barricade. Yeah. Words, Words, whatever. Question you know what? mark. I'm the I'm the one that talks here all right i can miss a word every once in a while all right you can it's true you can gentlemen it's been fun it's been real i thought it was real fun you guys know i love oh. you mm-hmm. oh wait we didn't go over so we've got um more camp leap frog of course coming up we've got oh geez we're, we've got we're alabama making, coming up yep, we're making some debuts we're making mm-hmm. things happen some new mm-hmm. states that are going to experience the runway we're in Alabama. Um, like, uh, uh, where are we? Gadsden in Alabama. We're actually one of the featured men's matches on on the uh, with the Belladonna's division. Nice. The new Belladonna's division. We're one of the going to be one of the featured men's matches, which is an honor for that. It's it's uh, mm-hmm. definitely interesting to be on the other side um, of the uh, you know the event where um, you know we do get to be featured as men on the show so that's that's, a, that's mm-hmm. an honor because they could you know have picked a lot of other individuals but you know they they did pick the runway to be featured mm-hmm. in one of their um one of their events so that's exciting and um it, to be on there with so many talented um female wrestlers is going to be great and it's really going to be you know something that everybody's going to want to watch from start to finish like i'm very yeah. excited and, and like calvin said it's such an honor to be on something like this because it's really you know we are the we are just the extra it's really the whole focus is on the amazing female talent that they're going to have definitely yeah i i agree i i like what the belladonna division is doing and mission pro with thunder rosa mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. you guys both know that I love women's wrestling, and uh, mm-hmm. I, essentially for the big ones, I think the women's wrestling saved them during the pandemic. Uh, I will say that mm-hmm. year and year and years down the line, um, what Mella and Sasha and all of them do, mm-hmm. it, it's better storylines. Mm-hmm. And Sasha's back, thank goodness. Uh, I'll, like, yeah. now. I'll watch. I'll watch. I'll watch WWE again now. Right, but she's back. I agree. I agree. But yeah, we always have stuff coming on the coming on the line. Um, I actually just posted um, a little more info about some of our stuff coming up in August. So there will be a September post here coming shortly. Um, hopefully, things you know maintain for us and stay busy. Um, I know there's a lot going on in the world right now, um, so it could take a turn. But um, you know, hopefully, everyone out there can uh, stay safe. And, um, you know, we'll we'll just keep getting through this and then we'll continue to have things be back to a a new normal. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're hoping things stay intact. Um, you know, we were pretty lucky to be one of the, the, uh, to be pretty busy still during Mm -hmm. everything that's been happening. And, um, you know, it's all about being safe and, and taking care of each other and ourselves and, you know, really just um, working together to get back to that normal. So, you know, we hope that we can do our part in that and, exactly. um, you know, and, and keep maintaining that schedule to give people that that uh, escape from reality, even if it's just for a few hours. So, uh, f- One more question for me, then if you guys want to keep talking, it's, I'm fine. Um, do you see... With what could possibly go down again in the world, do you see more companies doing what Camp Leapfrog did? Because they essentially were, were the firsts to to do something right. like that. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of people piggybacked and said, oh, we just came up with this great idea. Um, and Leapfrog did it. Do you see mm-hmm. other organizations saying, hey, man, we can do this. We can you know, have our, our wrestlers – do this and then streamline it essentially. Because it I, depends. It de- yeah, it really does depend. I mean, there's the leapfrog did you know get things started 
And, you know, there are a lot of companies that had a great success throughout the pandemic with it. Um, I think that honestly, it, it, it a lot of the people that are getting looks today, at the pandemic seriously helped them out. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So um, I think that the pandemic really did help them out. And, you know, that's why you're seeing a lot of these people on the major space because like Fight TV, IWTV, YouTube, you know, they're just getting out there and they're reaching a different audience. They're reaching a national audience instead of local audience. So I think that's going to be more beneficial to people. And that's what's really, you know, helped us out. But I, I, I really think that if, you know, uh, hopefully knock on wood that it doesn't happen, but if we do get, you know, uh, everything resurfaces and we have to go back to that, I, I think that there's going to be a lot of more people going through and doing that personally, but that's just me. And I think it's going to be on a different level. Um, mm-hmm. I really think that it's not going to be the same as Leapfrog, where it's going to be kind of like that soap opera. I think well, right. it's going to be more of like a classic studio type of tape, which I, I, I kind of like. I think it brings a, a different aspect to it. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think it'll be, it'll be interesting. And then I think it teaches a lot of, um, wrestlers too, how to work a little differently and be more successful, um, in a different way. So I think it can only do good. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. Um, like I said, I hope it doesn't veer back to that, but you know, it's all about adapting to the changes and what's going to occur. For sure. For sure. All right, guys, once again, Thank you for stopping by Can Crushers. Um, I, I think they should be every so often. And when you mm-hmm. do see me out and about, you can critique um, what I have on or something to help me. Well, they give it. Right. I mean, like, but you're going to say, hey, Mark, you have to go buy, you know, this awesome shirt. And I go buy it and they're like, well, you, you didn't. Or we just need to plan um, time to go spend all my wife's money and just yeah. buy me new stuff. I'm down for exactly. That. And maybe you guys can get something too. You're all right with that? Even better. Even better. We're always shocked. Even better. <laughs> Even better. All right, gentlemen. Uh, thanks again for stopping by, and we'll see you definitely on August 28th for the Fashionista Street Fight as you take on the STDs at 2PW, uh, retaining your tag team championships. Is there any other way? Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it could have been. Calvin, still, little, I guess he's not salty. We won't say salty. He didn't like salty. So, nonetheless, we won't say that. But it didn't go as bad as it could have. And I think I might be close to getting a, you know, date with them to fix up my stuff. It's just we just can't pick the right date. Guys, The Runway, the most fashionable tag team ever in professional wrestling and the two PW tag team champions again, August 28th, they'll be taking on the former champs, the STDs in a fashionista street fight match. I'm excited to see this. I really am. But guys, give them a like, a follow love on all their social medias. Give Tyler and Calvin separate likes and follows on all their social medias and just keep an eye on them, man. They are great. They really are great, great, great human beings as well. Um, just still have a little bit of heat with them, apparently. So, nonetheless, that's what uh, that's what we have this week on Can Crushers. At least I don't have as much heat as Megan Nelson does. I don't know. I, I think we, we make the call that Megan Nelson does not return to Can Crushers anytime soon. Unless she's going to talk about the runway. And that's going to be rough for her. It's going to be rough for her. Guys, remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called the garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Yeah.